Huma Sikela has been playing music that closely reflects the struggles and agony of South Africans during apartheid. He was inspired by Father Haddleston to play music at a young age and his music opened the world's eyes to the hardships created by the apartheid state. He continues to mesmerize young and old with his music and today we have the privilege of chatting and getting up close with Rahu Masikela. Thank you so much for making the time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm starstruck, so you're going to have to forgive me if you have I, to cut that I'm out all over right the place. Away, <laughs> starstruck, we're going to have problems with this interview. But I'm sure you find that with most interviews, isn't it? You don't you no, find interviewers no, I, I looking at up you front. saying... I cancel it up front. Look, there's two people in a conversation, yes. and we have to do it from there. Otherwise, we're going to get off track. I'm really fascinated to know who was Brahu before we knew Brahu. I mean, let's go back to 19 uh, 1940s, 1950s South Africa. Who was the young man? Well, I was born in Whitbank in Gwakuka Township uh, uh, in Pumalanga uh -huh. in 1939. And it was a small, real, uh, 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 fragrant uh, little boor town, you know. And, um, um, my grandmother had a shebeen. She also t uh, took washing from white people. And um, um, it was a, 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 a the biggest coal mining town. So uh, it was a poor of southern and central uh, uh, Africa besides uh, uh, the people okay. from, from South Africa. It was really a mine. So there were people from all over. But it was a time of um, uh, small townships. Uh, they all had uh, community centers or, or, or what they call municipal halls. And um, uh, there was big bands and there were singing groups like uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Lady Smith, Black Mambaza, whom you heard but you never saw. Mm -hmm. And our TGIF was a Venda and Bapedi drums in every township. You know, at Friday, when sun, the sun goes down, you hear that and it's so and then the weekends were carnivals. Everybody had um, a, a gramophone, mm -hmm. and um, the, uh, South Africans were really voracious record collectors of 78 RPMs. And, um, and I was lucky because I was born into music. I mean, my music was born into me because I came out that. dancing, more <laughs> or less, <laughs> and singing, and uh, I couldn't get away from the gramophone. So my life was just like always uh, 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 focused on all kinds of music that was happening. There was no television, so we sang in the streets you know, when, we, when we were children. We had all kinds of children's songs. If there was going to be a wedding, a white flag went up, and like for a whole month on your block, uh, they'd wow. be practicing all the songs with the steps, the wedding. And then um, all the different ethnic groups from all over uh, uh, um, the uh, surrounding diaspora used to have their spots. Mm -hmm. where they used to like then have their pageantry and like sing the songs and and they were marching bands and uh, it was usually closed by the machangans on Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. They would like go through the streets and we would follow him. <laughs> and uh, um, at school we had um, uh, uh, um, a Stedford concert because mm -hmm. South Africa had amazing Choral composers like you know, uh, 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 mm -hmm. and, uh, Is this later Mohabelua on in, 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 in high school? No, in secondary from, school. from primary school. From primary school. So, so music was always there. You know, the perception is that uh, you got introduced to music at St. Peter's Secondary no, School. No, by the time I was five, my parents really wow. like got very nervous and they got me piano lessons because in those days there were like many, I'm sure you've heard of Emily Muzielwa from so far time, but there were many like ragtime and classical sort of uh, music teachers in all the townships. A lot of people played piano. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I started playing the piano when I was five. Then when I was 13 years old, myself and my best friend at school were always in trouble, Stompy Manana, <laughs> who's still a great trumpeter. Yes, yeah. yes. We went to see a movie called Young Men with a Horn, and when I came back, we decided we're gonna be trumpet players. We still are. So Father Huddleston like, knew everybody and uh, everybody's parents and was always nosy, how are you doing? What it always asked from the teachers and the principal what was happening. One day I was in the 
bed with the flu and he came to me and said, what would really make you happy? Because he heard the yes, rumors about that me that and music. And I said, Father, if, if I can just get a trumpet, I won't bother anybody ah. anymore. And he got me a trumpet and a trumpet teacher from the Johannesburg Native Municipal Brass Band. Uncle Sauda has taught me the trumpet. I took to it like uh, a fish to water right away. But Brahu, what do you mean by that you will stop uh, uh, being troubled? Were you troublesome? Were you a, were you a naughty Let me young say man? I was restless. We were <laughs> restless. <laughs> what, what are some of the things that you used to get up to? Oh, no. Uh, uh, well, I don't know if you went to boarding school, but yes, me I and did. Stompy yeah. were perpetually gated. We were grounded. <laughs> Okay. And uh, the, tre the prefects didn't like us, the monks didn't like us, the nuns didn't like us, the school teachers didn't like us. And we, I think we had too much of a sense of humor, but we were also athletic. Okay. You know, we both played soccer mm -hmm. and we played tennis. We ran, we boxed. But uh, Stompy was, was very scrawny and skinny, but he was prepared to fight anybody, anytime. You know, okay. whatever way, giant. Come, <laughs> you know, and like uh, the, a person who had fought with Stompy, you, you always saw them with a small little doom piece all over their faces. <laughs> Roland Alona the Stompy. <laughs> and Stompy was so tough that if you hit him, he just got grey. You no, know, but nothing. Yeah. And nothing happened. Yeah, and, and, and were you quite? Sunny, were you also sunny, quite feisty? Sunny, rarba <laughs> You know, but uh, it was, it was, it was. It was out, an outdoorsy uh, uh, era, you know, mm -hmm. we're outside, we played soccer in the street, we played uh, Black by Patile, uh, we played uh, um, uh, rounders, even with the, you could get next to the girls if you played rounders with them, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, my grandmother was very stern, we worked in Heshebin, especially me and my sister, from when we were small, our, our job was to go when I was four or five years old, we'd go to the store and we'd buy uh, the sorghum, we'd buy yeast, we'd buy the brown sugar. You know, sometimes it took a few trips, okay. but the, 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 the store seemed far away. But when I go there now, it's like a, a hop and a skip. It's always but, like um, a um, So the miners which is, used to come, my, my grandmother was four foot nine, but she could carry a 10 gallon tin of um, um, so water mm -hmm. on one s uh, on here and two others this side, have my sister on her back and I'd be hanging on to her apron strings and she stopped for conversations. But who didn't pay uh, would lose their teeth because she was very fast, like <laughs> um, um, uh, head and a knee <laughs> and the guy would be on the floor the picking up floor. his teeth, yeah. Okay. And she'd search the pockets, let him <laughs> Brahim, uh, let's hold uh, it there. I need to take an ad break and then we'll okay. continue about your life in second school and boarding school. We're getting up close with uh, Hugh Masekela. We would greatly appreciate any suggestions or comments that you have. Please uh, get hold of me on my Twitter handle at Tepi Mutsekuwa. Stay with SABC News. Thank you for staying with us as we continue to get up close with internationally acclaimed music maestro Hugh Masigela. Um, let's chat about boarding school just a little bit more before we move on to talk about the next phase of your life and then of course life in, in exile. What would you say now looking back were some of the things that you you learned in, high, uh, in, in boarding school? I mean one of the things that I would probably think of in my own experience is to be independent. First of all, you know, that you get to learn in boarding school. What did you learn that you think carried you throughout your life? Well, if we go a little back, you know, my, my parents were ex school teachers, and my mother was, became a social worker, and my father, a health inspector. And in those days, you grew up with your grandparents until you were old enough to go and, st and stay with your parents, mm -hmm. and you were latchkey kids, and then you became the servant. You know, you chopped the wood and you made the <laughs> fires and. You uh, cleaned the windows and cleaned the house every day. Yeah. Um, uh, so I got very close uh, to my parents. I grew up, we, we lived in Springs, in Pennyville Springs, mm -hmm. pre Quatema. And then in 1947, my father got a job as health, chief health inspector in Alexander Township. 
And Springs Painville was a, a modern township, a model township, but um, uh, 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 Alexander was rough. There were no lights, there was no sewage. Yes. You know, they collected um, the buckets. Uh, feces buckets on Tuesdays and Saturday nights. The whole township smelled. Mm. Um, there were dongas, some uh, houses got, you know, like. But it was also like one of the most colorful townships and the most uh, militant. The most militant. So every. Sunday, number mm. three square, there were rallies. So we grew up in boycotts and, and, and marches. Mm. And, but we grew up at the rallies, and, and uh, 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 that's where we saw all the Mandelas and the Lillian Goys and the Adam Tuanas. Uh, it was p part entertainment, part meeting each other, but also like getting hip to what's happening. Of course, it was, was, was pre-apartheid, but it was just as bad, if mm. not worse. You know. So we grew up also knowing Very who we were. And we knew yes. that it, we were living, as even as children, that we're living in, a, in an oppressed era. But the one thing that is never talked about too much is mm -hmm. that we, uh, we all live to outsmart the system. We all live to outsmart the cops. And uh, uh, we won most of the time. Mm -hmm. When I say we, I just mean everybody. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, um, do you, do you remember a, a story, just one story, of well, how you had to outsmart the cops? Well, we outsmarted the cops every time there was a raid as kids, because um, uh, um, although they, they supplied the booze, they would come and raid sometimes, and they would, all, the, all the roofs were corrugated iron roofs. So as soon as the cops were entering at the beginning, of the, at the entrance of the township, you would sort of think there was a, way, a hailstorm. Okay. <laughs> because every kid threw little uh, stones okay. on top of the roofs. Yeah. And like ev the old ladies knew to hide the, you know, the evidence. The, <laughs> the thing that was difficult to hide was Mkumbut. Because the cops came with these like iron rods that like, and there was a open spaces, you know, where the old ladies used to go and like um, hide, uh, uh, hide their stuff and let it brew underground. Uh, um, so when I was 11 years old, uh, I was already a boxer because I used to play piano. But my, when I got to Alexander Township, my mother said, they don't play piano here. <laughs> you know, they don't play piano and tennis. You have to boss up, you know, box. And, 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 and um, Theom Tembu actually was a social worker, that the one who um, trained Baby Jake. Yes. And he, had, he was a champion producer. But I learned how to um, box. Not that I couldn't fight, but mm -hmm. I got better at it. And um, um, when my parents decided to send me to boarding school, I was 11, and I couldn't believe. You know, I mean, that I'd cleaned the windows, uh. I'd been cooked, I'd, uh, you know, I, I even could iron and what. And I couldn't believe that at 11, they were they sending were me to boarding school. Uh -huh. And um, uh, um, But you, would you say it was, now in hindsight, it was uh, one of the best experiences? It was the best time. It was the best yeah. time of my life, because I really learned, well, we learned how to really cook, how to iron. Mm. Had to look after ourselves and also to be hardy because I went to St. Peter's, which is now St. Martin's mm -hmm. up in Rosettenville, which is the highest part of uh, uh, Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. And the winters were brutal and we didn't have hot water. Mm. And we did this, uh, we cleaned the, the place. That was what you call manual work. Everybody had their. Uh, and, uh, uh, but we had also an amazing education. Mm. I mean, for instance, in geography. We learned to draw the map of every country in the world. It's rivers, the physical features, mm. rivers and mountains, what? climate, exports, mm. imports, uh, uh, vegetation. Uh, and and uh, uh, when I went overseas, I knew where I was going. Mm. You know, it wasn't mm. like new places because it was very thorough. Thar it was actually a British education in those days. So. You notice that people from that era, you know, what Tambo, what Sulu, and everything, people were very deeply steeped mm. in education. Mm. It was like a, a big, big, um, and when you failed, you know, if you flunked the whole, your whole street and the whole township, <laughs> you, you. <laughs>
So what kind of a student would you say you were? Were you uh, I was very excelling? I was very, well, very smart in school, but I wasn't focused because all I heard was music. Oh, I see. All I heard was music all the time. And I was boxing. A, I was a Renault. <laughs> By then, I was just into music. When I started playing the trumpet, I forgot totally about boxing because you can't play with swollen lips. Oh, so every jab is a disadvantage, you know. So, so now you by had then to make we were like choice. record collectors, and we knew, we started knowing everything about Duke Ellington and Count Basie and Zakes and Corsi and Demi Were you Pilis, clear so at that point that this is something that you wanted to do for the rest of your life, that you wanted to play music? I couldn't imagine doing anything else. Mm. And when I was nine years old, before I even went to St. Peter's, I knew I was going to New York. I mm -hmm. didn't know how and when. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay, we but I, wasn't, I wasn't going to New York um, uh, to, to run away from anything. I, I was going there to gather music, information yeah. mm. so I could come back and become, you know, and, 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 and teach music mm, uh, besides mm. everything. I want to take a break, Brahu, and when we come back, <coughs> I want to talk about <coughs> life in exile and how you experienced it. Yeah. After the break, we continue to get up close with Hugh Masekela. We'd greatly appreciate suggestions and comments you have about the show. My Twitter handle is at Sepi Musekua. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us as we wrap up our conversation with internationally acclaimed musical master Hugh Masekel. I, you know, I think it's so interesting that you say um, you moved to New York not because you were running from anything, not because of being exiled, because of uh, the, the situation in the country, but because you just <coughs> wanted to learn about music. I but was hungry. I was hungry yeah, to be. Yeah. I was hungry to be as outstanding at what I did as the people that, um, that I you admired, had been like the up Louis Armstrongs and the Miles Davises and the Dizzy Gillespies. So I then, how so do you end access. up becoming this ambassador of anti-apartheid movement? Because that's who I didn't you become. become an, I didn't you know, become an ambassador. I came from people who were fighting apartheid, who were trying to outsmart. The system uh, on, but, a, on but an hourly basis. But your music was used for that movement. It was not my music. It was the music of my people. Mm, mm, if I mm. if I came from China, I'd probably be a hell of a, 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 a kung fu fighter, or maybe I'd have a, a, a restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. But 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 but, <laughs> but the world did if lend I came you. From but the world did lend you that identity. You know, people started to identify yeah. you in but that way. But it wasn't mine. So it was not yours. Was yeah. So how choice. did you deal it with wasn't that? My choice because I'll tell you that mm -hmm. from my perspective, 
the real heroes of this country are those people who laid their lives on the line mm. facing the guns and making this place ungovernable, all those people. And most of them are never nodded, Spoken you know, but without yes. them, we wouldn't be. Without South African people and where I came from, mm. I wouldn't have um, the material, mm. but it mm. would be very weird. And of course, I was brought to the States by, by uh, to England first by Halston, who was an anti-apartheid act uh, activist, mm -hmm. by Miriam McEver, who was the first person to really like hip the world to what was going on mm -hmm. here at the risk of a very uh, 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 lucrative career. And Belafonte was like the civil rights person. They all, what, what, especially Belafonte always said to me, if you are what you are because of the people you're coming from, and they are catching hell, and you don't talk about them, you ain't going anywhere. Mm, mm, mm. And the identity after 1994, uh, again, that imposed identity, what would you say it is now? I don't live in that world. Mm. You know, I still live in the world I lived in when I was a kid. But I, I, I you know, I, I was, brought, I was brought up in in in, in a, a resistance environment uh, against injustice. And like as a human being, mm -hmm. I I stand against injustice. So if I was a garbage man, mm. I'd I'd have the same feelings. So. It, it would be very weird for me to come from here mm. and pretend like that, that is, uh, everything is hunky-dory then or even now because we still have our problems, mm. you know. Mm. Mm. Brahu, um, looking at your life today, what would you say is your, your focus? Is it family life? Are there other interests outside of the music that occupy your time? You know, my children are all time? grown. Mm -hmm. I have grandchildren, but... Mm -hmm. I think that my biggest focus in life and, 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 and what I would really like to smile away with when I go is um, heritage restoration into mm -hmm. our lives because the ch I had a very rich childhood mm. and you don't hear the drums on Fridays uh, mm. uh, and through the weekends, mm. you know. And it would be great to just be able to restore that into our lives so that even though we're advanced, we also have like the same uh, 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 capabilities as Malaysians or Chinese or English people, where we are aware of our heritage, where we still speak our languages, we know um, um, our, our songs, and we're not consumed by advertisement totally or by religion how do, how do, totally. How do you achieve that, bro? You, how we just have to that? bring it back through entertainment, but mm -hmm. it is there. 80% of Africans are rural ethnic people but they have no space where they can show who they are. Mm -hmm. Our languages mm -hmm. are disappearing, and um, it, it, it's just a travesty. Mm -hmm. But we have the content, and why not show it instead of saying, ooh, what if we say some you? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> so, that's So uh, we have to, otherwise, when they ask our grandchildren who they are, they're going to say, well, hey, they say, they say we used to be Africans long mm -hmm. ago, mm -hmm. and that would be a great pity and I think um, 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 that uh, we will be guilty of, for mm, that. Mm. And I think that's what your music uh, continues to do. It's not could my you tell, music. Could you tell us a little <laughs> bit? It is, it is your music. It, it yeah. is your talent. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, we, we, we will always recognize that. Yeah. So could you tell us about the upcoming um, concert that you're having? Because I think we would love to give our viewers some tickets. Yeah, well, you know... Uh, Quickly, yes. I, the thing, one of the things that breaks my heart is that I left from the township, mm. but when I came back, uh, I couldn't live there because I couldn't find a place. And um, I've, you know, I've been living in town, and it breaks my heart that people have to come from the townships or from the rural areas mm. to come and say, mm. to, to come and listen to their music. So when um, Asipol um, asked me to do their first commercial, I said. Listen on the side, can we really like try and do a perpetual, a, a, a township tour in perpetuity? Nice. And last year we tried to do it uh, in Alexander Township yes. and um, uh, so we're to the same venue and, and, and it rained like hell that whole weekend. Oh. So we're hoping it doesn't happen this time, but on the 28th of this month, yes. September, we're at the um, Oval the Cricket Oval in uh, uh, Rockville, uh, in Soweto, mm -hmm. with uh, Tandiswa Mazwai and Puzakemisi and Mikasa, 
and um, uh, Desmond and the Tutus and uh, um, uh, Complete the group and uh, 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 Putuma and whoever I've forgotten, please forgive mm. me, but uh, it's going to be really my first township initiative since 1991 I when I came back. I think that is wonderful, yeah. Brahu. We I have to close the show. I uh, I I agree, and yeah. I I think what we appreciate so much is that you continue to be active in the music industry, and you are part of the the young generation of musicians uh, that are coming up. So I'm we not thank part you. of the Miami. <laughs> <laughs> of course you are, <laughs> Brahu. Thank you so much for having a conversation with us thank here you, on Mr. Up Kula. Close. Yeah. And to our viewers out there, would you like to perhaps uh, go to the concert that's happening in Rockville on the 28th of this month? Then why don't you uh, give me a shout on my Twitter handle, that's at Tepi Motekua. We have five double tickets to give away and we'd love to give them to you. We'll catch you next time on another episode of Up Close. See you then. Bye-bye.